Hi everybody. Today I thought I would share with you my birth story of our second daughter and how it was such an amazing experience and so opposite honestly of my first child. So if you're watching this, you obviously enjoy watching birth stories or you're an expecting mom. So I hope this encourages you to um, try a natural labor and to maybe practice some of the methods I did and use some of the methods to make your labor an enjoyable and truly memorable experience. Labor started on June 4th, really, on June 4th. I was due May 26th, so that puts me at like 41 and three days about overdue. So um, I actually had to go in for an NST, a non-stress test, to see how the baby girl was doing. And that was inconclusive that day. And so then they took me to an ultrasound and they were looking for um, different things like if she would flex and move her arms, if she had practice breathing, things such as that. So that did pass, which in my previous birth with our daughter Nevea, I was 41 weeks, I had to do an NST again. Uh, she did not pass those at that time, but she only had a four out of an eight and you need eight out of eight to pass. So that was definitely different because then um, they pretty much just told me I had to induce and I was not ready, baby was not ready. So that was completely different. And I ended up having an OB that day, even though I typically have a nurse midwife, an OB told me all this. So that was different too, because um, in my opinion, they sometimes are a little more medical minded instead of let the mom choose what she would like. So um, anyways, with this one, I was able to go home and I had my daughter with me actually. So we um, had to run a few errands. I stopped at a few garage sales. I was feeling some tightness in the belly. Um, I started timing them on an app just to see because I kind of thought they were probably contractions. And the funny thing is, the nurse midwife I had said, you know what, I'm on call on Sunday and I'll probably see you in the um, after delivery room. And so funny thing is, she actually did. So then um, we ended up doing a little shopping and stuff and we went home. And my contractions were super sporadic, 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes apart, and then sometimes they'd get down to 10. Um, being more active, they definitely got closer together, being walking around and stuff like that. So um, anyways, all throughout the afternoon I had that. My husband, I called him and said, when I got home, hey, I think I have been having contractions just sporadically throughout the afternoon. And so um, he did come home from work like 20 minutes early just because I was like, I don't know. I don't know what natural labor feels like. And so this could be it. This might not be it. So all evening into about until about 11 o'clock we decided to go to bed because I was like I'm still having them very randomly we went to bed at 11 and they stopped completely my contractions did and then at one o'clock I woke up to go to the bathroom and I laid back down and I felt my upper legs get a little bit wet and I just didn't think anything of it like oh I guess I just had to continue going to the bathroom. I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't like a gush. It was just a little bit of wet. And so I was a little concerned too that my contractions had stopped and like, is there something I need to do? I asked my husband, what should I do? Oh, um, back up a little bit. My mom, I called her to come up because she was watching her daughter Nevea while um, we went to the hospital. But uh, she came up then Friday night to stay with her. But I said, I don't know if I really am in labor or not. Uh, so anyways, uh, I got up at 4.30 that morning, probably because I was anxious and partially because I knew when I got active, the contractions would start again. So I got up at 4.30, I went and just walked in my gardens, watered, started a sprinkler because it's been super hot here lately. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to get this done. Just continue with normal life. Um, got a coffee going, you know, just kind of was still enjoying the morning and by six o'clock I was like, all right, I'm going to start timing my contractions and we spent the morning timing them. Uh, we went for a walk as a family. I went and bought some flowers at our greenhouse. Uh, we planted some flowers. I actually did some gardening and uh, so timing them. On the app it said your contractions are about seven to eight minutes apart and so I'm like okay you know maybe I should I should think about what I need to be doing here 
and so I I called our nurse midwife or the nurse midwife on call in the hospital and I had told them okay they they're about seven to eight minutes apart and especially a little more intense when I'm up walking and moving around and then I told her about the feeling wet incident the water at, that happened at one o'clock and she was like oh you better come in we'll see you in about an hour because it takes us about an hour to get to the hospital so I was like okay I'll just finish what I'm doing we'll eat lunch at home and then we'll go but then I told my husband and my mom and they're like you know what you better probably just go quick grab a snack type lunch and go so we did that and we left at about noon and the whole ride up my contractions were getting stronger and stronger which was weird because I was sitting by the time I got to the hospital I had timed them for like 20 minutes they were like three or four minutes apart and so <laughs> definitely don't wait if this is your second child to go um, when your contractions are four to five minutes apart and so I was fine six they were six to seven minutes apart anyways got to the hospital and they got me into triage after of course all the paperwork and things like that and um, I'd never been in triage before with our other one obviously because I was induced at the clinic that's in the hospital and they literally just took me right over to a hospital room to get induced with my first so I went to triage and um, the nurse midwife on call said let's just check to see if you have your amniotic sac because she was thinking that's what had broke through the night and of course it had up in the top area so it's more just a dripple um, down it's not like when you hear stories of just water gushing that didn't happen to me but my water did break naturally which was so different than with my other daughter because they did all the things they could possibly do to get me induced before pitocin so anyways I was at a four and a half when they checked my dilation as well um, but they kept me in triage for like two hours. Part of it too, they were monitoring the baby. Um, part of it also, I passed out. <laughs> I do I do this sometimes um, when I get like my female checks. Um, I think it's just a brain thing. I pass out when stuff like that happens at some points. And so they wanted to monitor the baby because of course the baby's heart rate just plummeted when I passed out because it was trauma to mom, so trauma to baby. Um, but anyways, they wanted me, me to be up and walking around though to get that hard labor coming because um, they wanted, since the amniotic sac and fluid was leaking and the water broke, within 24 hours it gets slightly more risky on the baby. So, um, but being tied down on the bed because they wanted to monitor, it was kind of difficult. But we did walk around a little bit and as I walked, they definitely were two to three minutes apart when we walked around the hospital room and I practiced the Bradley method breathing um, religiously honestly from the time I knew I was pregnant until I gave birth and that was so helpful you just do like a deep breath in and let it out um, and just focus on letting the contraction wash over you honestly and the nurse who was on uh, monitoring me she's like it doesn't even look like you're having contractions and so I was like, okay, good. What I practiced was doing its job. And so that was so helpful. They got me through the entire labor. And I had done some of that with my first, but this, I think practicing it from the start is so much more beneficial. So I did all that. And then they finally got us into a um, room and I was hoping to have a water birth. However, um, with the passing out, they were afraid that I might pass out while giving labor. Um, just some things that they were a little nervous about so I didn't have a water birth which you know my I still like my birth story and how everything happened so it is okay maybe next time we can have a water birth but we just got into a room um, they had to do some blood work for something they had missed I guess previously in my um, in my pregnancy and so that took a while again they kept me on the bed though and so getting up walking around did not increase hard labor which kind of stinks but we were able to um, move around just a little bit after blood work was done and then sat back down on the bed so they could check and this was at four o'clock um, and at four o'clock they checked I was at a five so I hadn't progressed a lot so they suggested breaking the rest of my water because the bottom was still intact but it had just broken at the top 
And so they broke my water at 420 and we hadn't really eaten lunch. So my husband had gotten a little bit of lunch ordered, um, like a smoothie for me to eat. And so at 420, after they broke the water, we got our food, we ate a little bit, and then I really felt the contractions. And of course they still, <laughs> They still had me sitting on the bed because they wanted to monitor the baby's heart rate at that time and what was going on for, they said about 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, I could um, sit in the bathtub, get a birthing ball, walk around, whatever I wanted to do. So in between contractions, I was drinking some smoothie, eating a little food, um, working on my breathing every time a contraction came. By about 4.35, 4.40, I was like, I'm done eating. I can't eat anymore. I told my husband, I gotta lay on my side. And that's how I'd practice my Bradley method. Breathing was on my left side with one leg up over the other, um, just in a really relaxed position. And so that's how I ended up laying. And so at that point, I was really just laboring pretty hard. And I told my husband at one point when that I heard them come in, um, cause I was, now to the deep moaning instead of just the more relaxed breathing um definitely keep those groans low so that you're um more relaxed too that has helped me a lot so i got to that point and then all of a sudden i felt so much pressure on my rectum in the back end and i just told my husband um, well, they had, they said, we're going to check you real quick. And I said, that's fine, but I'm going to stay on my side or pretty much stay on my side. And I was at a seven to eight is what I was. So I was dilating pretty quickly because I was 20 minutes from like a five to a seven or eight. And all of a sudden I'm just, I heard them um, leave one more time. I think they had to run out to the hallway to get something. I'm not sure what, or go check on another patient. They said, we'll be back in just a few minutes. All of a sudden I told my husband, I have to push can I push and he he's like uh no not yet and uh, I just said I'm gonna push and uh I I heard a ton of scurrying they were not ready for me because it happened so so fast and so I said I'm pushing and I just heard everybody getting ready I really don't know quite what happened because it was so so fast I was just holding my pillow um, on the side just pushing through and I I felt with all the natural labor you feel everything with my first I ended up getting epidural after 13 hours of hard labor and my first uh, birth story I'll put in the description box for you but after 13 hours I had gotten an epidural and my whole labor with my first daughter was 28 hours um, so by this time with this second one there was no chance. I had, then I told my husband, I see why I got an epidural at this point. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, he had told me, I knew you're in transition at that point. And then yes, I did feel a ring of fire for a slight second. The head came out. I literally pushed one more time and she came right out. They brought her up to me and I was like, I just had a baby. And it literally took only four hours in the hospital time from one o'clock to about 4.58 she was born. So from the time they broke my water at 4.20, I had a daughter at five o'clock and I had been laboring at home pretty much all Saturday morning. So really this labor, I would say like true early labor to delivery was 11 hours and all natural. It was just other than them breaking the second part of my water, but it had already broke and it was just incredible. I was in shock. I literally was holding our little girl and I was like, she's here. It's so surreal. And the emotions of my first one were so much higher. I was bawling because it had lasted so long. This one was just so different and enjoyable. And to be honest, I had no tearing after this one. I only had one stitch with the first, but um, I have, I have been up and moving around, not trying to push it, but up and moving around. And this is only, um, the sixth day right now that I'm feeling this after labor. And I, I just feel no pain down there unless I, like I said, if I overdo it, um, it's just been incredible. The healing process is so, so different compared to when you get an epidural, um, for me anyways it was and so i highly recommend if you can if you are willing to try a natural labor 
do so and it was just such an amazing experience so then literally they had me holding her daughter um they let all the blood get out of the cord and then uh, the placenta came out within less than five minutes and that was just a super easy push of course you feel all that too which is so different because with an epidural you're numb you can barely even know how to push because you can't feel anything so I do like knowing how to be able to and feeling that I can push instead of all numb and jiggly and all that afterwards so uh, that was just so surreal and so amazing and our little girl nadia ezra killian came out at eight pounds 13 ounces she was 21 inches long and she is just such a blessing and a joy to have and i am so grateful that i was able to have a natural labor um because that's something i've been praying for and really was grateful to have and feel so blessed and who knows the next one maybe we'll have um a different type of birth with a water birth or maybe we'll go as far as to be at a birthing center i don't know what the next one brings if we have more if we're blessed with more children but i highly recommend like i said a natural labor if you can recovery time is so it's just so different and um, i feel like i can enjoy nursing my daughter and not feeling in pain and enjoy my family as well as we're home resting after the baby was born so if you want to see the difference definitely watch the other story and then watch this one and hopefully it just encourages you to prepare for your labor as well too and don't go in empty-minded either because I think it's good as a mom to know what you would like in your labor and not to let people just tell you what they think you need to do so Anyways, that is my birth story of Nadia, and I thought you'll be seeing her in more videos, of course, with my homemaking videos. I know this isn't a typical homemaker motherhood um, simple living video, but I still wanted to share, and I know a lot of you do enjoy watching these, and hopefully, again, it encouraged you. So I hope to see you in the next video, and I'll talk with you soon. All right, love you guys. Bye.